Let's take a look at the Mets' top prospects, brought to you by your Tri-State Cadillac dealer. Shortstop Andres Jimenez is at the top of the list. He's a 19-year-old international signing, followed by the top picks from 2017 and 2016, David Peterson and Justin Dunn, respectively. Sandy Alderson has said that the farm system isn't brimming with prospects, and anytime a list like that has a guy like Chris Flexen, who has had ups and downs at the major league level this season, Met fans aren't going to be thrilled. So, John, what's behind the lack of prospects? Yeah, it comes down to they haven't drafted well enough, and uh, a lot has been made. I've heard it kind of a narrative this winter that part of the reason is that they, they tr made those trades in 15 and 16, and obviously Fulmer was a big piece who got away. But other than that, I looked, I looked back at those trades – for guys like Cespedes, uh, the next year, Jay Bruce, guys like Kelly Johnson, Clippard, uh, some of the relievers, Addison Reed. And none of those guys that they gave up other than Fulmer are on anybody's top 20, top 25, top 30 prospect list. So it's not like that's the reason they don't have blue chippers. They just didn't draft well enough. You saw that, that list of top prospects. They're all from the last couple of years because they went a long time there for they weren't they just weren't getting guys that produced and be, became impact players and you look at we focus on the number one picks like Nimmo and Caccini maybe Dom Smith will turn into something Conforto's the one guy they hit on but uh, there's a, they went they went for a long time the number one picks not only didn't make it but then there's guys from like the two to ten range where a lot of teams cash in and get guys who are really surprised they went years without getting anybody to the big leagues from those numbers so I don't I don't know what it is about the scouting, but they, they have not done a good job overall in Alderson's uh, regime in there with the draft. The draft is really difficult. I'm going to tell you right now, I've sat behind many a first-round draft pick who never made it, and you're sitting there. I was a 30th rounder, and I would sit there and be able to plug away, put up my numbers, and go, how did this guy get that huge bonus? And he's going to get an opportunity because of where he was drafted, but they never pan out. There's a lot of things that aren't factored in. Yes, one thing is how big the guy is. And back then, it was kind of, you know, if he threw 95 and he was six foot five. That was a can't-miss prospect, but they never were able to evaluate. He didn't like being away from home. He didn't, uh, never pitched outside of his small high school area where he was dominant. Then all of a sudden you start putting him with some of the guys that are, you know what, just a little bit hungrier than him, worked a little bit harder. He never had that kind of competition. So those guys don't get pushed and they don't ever materialize to be as successful as they should. But you talk about the baseball acumen of, of, of a scouting department to say, hey, you know what, this guy is a first rounder and we're going to put all that money towards him and try and get him in there. I think there's a question, not a question of talent level, but when you start seeing some other guys like a Jose Fernandez, uh, that, that, you know, they wound up drafting guys way after Jose Fernandez when they had a shot at him, and you see a guy like Judge who was drafted way later for, compared to Dominic Smith, and you start wondering, how could that, how could you miss that big on a guy like that? But 29 other teams did as well. Yeah, but something's wrong. I mean, so if, if you're not doing it well, if you're not developing prospects, then you've got to go back to the drawing board and figure out what you're doing wrong. No, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you look at the draft, there's misses all over the place, right? Yeah. So you're not going to hit on every single draft choice, but are you investing in international scouting? Are you investing in where you're finding guys where you need to find them and bring them aboard and development? Are you developing guys properly down on the farm system as well? I mean, everything works well together. It was not that long ago that the Yankees had an emergency meeting down in Tampa because they had little to no prospects down on the farm, right? They've and they said, whole and they turned their entire yeah. system around, right? So it's all about winning for the Yankees. So the Mets, if it's not working right now and they're not developing guys, they've got to figure out exactly what they're doing wrong and why they're missing in the draft and why they're not developing guys. And they've got to get back to basics to where that farm system starts to become a feeder either via trade or for your big club. Hence the return of Omar Minaya. Certainly yeah. one of the reasons be, why they brought him back. Factor. Now we saw on that list Peterson and Dunn Obviously, pitcher Sandy Alderson has made it clear that, you know, going through pitchers to, you know, bolster the bullpen and the rotation seems right. to be a priority. But how do you go about it? You mentioned the, the Yankees, Moose, but they had chips to play in Andrew Miller and Aroldis Chapman to bring in, to bring well, back prospects. How it, do you replenish yeah, the system? Well, it even went beyond that, though. They changed the, the department heads and they, they turned that thing around. Yeah. I think with, with the people that were running the department, I don't know if that's what the Mets need. Omar Manaya may have something to do with that. But I think uh, you just have to. As Moose said, you got to figure out a way. If you're not getting it done right, you got to scout wet. Remember, the Yankees, uh, I mean, the Mets, when they when regime, when Alderson took over, Paul DePodesta was running the draft, and he went for those high school kids the first three years. Nimmo was like, I mean, you talk to a lot of people, wow, you're, take, you're taking a kid from, from Wyoming, Wyoming. Yeah. who didn't even play high school baseball because he didn't have a high school team. And then Caccini, a lot of people raised their eyebrows at him, and the Dodgers took Corey Seager four picks later or something like that. You have to you have to reevaluate all the time the, the draft uh, choices you're making and think about the way you're doing it. Maybe you should be taking college players over high school. You know, it just depends on your kind of your system that you have going there.